Hi, this is John. This video is about testing the reliability of switches used to arm rocketry electronics. Most of us use switches to arm our electronics, and there's all kinds of discussion about what switch is best, what problems there might be with other switches. So I decided had to do some testing. First up is the old classic phono jack. When the jack is in, the switch is off. You pull it out, it's on, often with a remove for flight tag attached. Number two is a plain old Radio Shack style slide switch. Guess I shouldn't say Radio Shack anymore, but your generic electronic switch. Third, we have another standard electronic switch type, the little mini toggle. Fourth, we have the shorter bolted selector switch, which has become very popular because the nice solid action and locking position on and off. Fifth is a PCB-based screw switch. This one is made by Featherweight, but there's also a slightly larger version made by Missileworks. And then sixth, we have the Fingertech Mini Switch. This is a nylon bodied screw switch that's used a lot in the um, robot world and which I thought was really solid and secure. And then seventh is a surprise entry, the non-switch. The twist and tape or twist and tuck as it's called, where you skip the switch and you just twist the two wire ends together. So how are we testing these? Basically I wanted to wire up these switches as though they were used in a rocket, test their normal functionality on and off, and test them under various stress conditions. The basic idea is to connect each switch to one line of an analog to digital converter giving me the capacity to test seven switches plus have a constant line for reference. The eight input lines were sampled by an A to D converter at one kilohertz. And here you can see the whole test setup in action. The first test was just to switch the switches and see how quickly and cleanly the voltage changed. Okay, let's take a look at the results. As far as the four switches go, pretty much no surprises. Instant on, instant off, clean transition. Things get more interesting when we look at the screw switches. The featherweight switch is a little slow. It looks worse than it is because I'm zoomed in. But what the hell is going on here with this Fingertech switch? This is really slow and really noisy. This was my first big surprise of the experiment. And even turning off, slow and very noisy. And finally, the non-switch twist and tape. And here's the trace. Unfortunately, it's a little difficult to see because it's yellow, but it's slow and there's a bounce, but it's not bad. Plus, somewhat surprisingly, the off was clean. The second test is to simulate the rocket hitting something, either a hard jolt taking off or a hard jolt landing. I banged it against the table on the bottom and the top. Nothing much to report here, all switches seemed immune, despite my whacking it pretty hard, both in the bottom and the top. This was actually the second surprise to me, because people seem worried about jolts turning switches off, and I couldn't reproduce that. If jolts can cause brownouts, they last less than a millisecond. The third test was to see how vibration affected the switches. I tested with various frequencies from 10 Hz up to 500 Hz. I ramped the amplitude up from zero slowly to the max that this amp could produce and then back down to zero and recorded the trace. For the vibration tests, all switches were immune except at 500 Hz. I recorded two very short on spikes from the featherweight switch. And when testing the featherweight switch specifically, I saw a lot of noise at 500 Hz plus a bounce that came from a different switch, the shorter. So that was the data I collected. I couldn't resist ending with my subjective views and ratings of the switches. Well, there's some data. 
I hope you found it interesting. I certainly found a few things that were surprising. Good luck with your electronics and good luck with choosing switches. It's actually not as bad as one might fear, but it's definitely more interesting than one would guess.